Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Okay, now here it is Friday, Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We started on page one, In the Beginning God. Now, <laughs> Here we are in the book of Revelation, and we've, we're talking now from the Alpha and the Omega, mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. What, what is he, he, he saying, just plain old Texas talk? I started this thing and I finished it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, in the book of Revelation, oh, there's so many things. Verse 7 of chapter 21. No, verse 3, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, in the beginning God, yes. the tabernacle of God is with men, and he that dwells with them, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be, be with them, and be their God. God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. No more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said, It is done. Mm -hmm. Now, Professor Greg said between, classes, between broadcasts, remember, he said, on the cross, he said, it's finished. And here he said, it's done. <laughs> Glory to God. He that overcomes will inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Yeah. Now, now I'm, I'm saying this to the audience. Now, listen up. People that are born again but full of fear, people that don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus went to head and paid, paid the price for this thing. Don't you wait any longer. Yeah. I mean, you do it now. You just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Take my life and do something with it. Yes. Glory to God. Now, you had a chance during the week to do that. If you haven't done it yet, do it now. And look at what he said. The fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars have their part in the lake of fire, which burn the fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, listen to me, class. Fear is not okay. And I've heard people say it. Well, now, fear will teach you something. Well, now, listen, F fear is, is, is a natural thing because there's time, there is a time to get up and get out of there and the, the force of fear, but you don't live by it. No. And you stop using it to express yourself, scared to death, thrilled to death, my back's killing me. Every time you said it was a lie. The Lord got on me about that, and I'll tell you something else he said to me, oh, and to Gloria. He said, don't ever, ever, Jump out from behind a door and frighten your children. And they laugh about it. You laugh about it. Why not? They get to where they like it. Yeah. Mm. Then they want to go to horror movies. And then the spirit of fear gets in there. Yeah. Don't do that. Fear is an enemy. Yes. Perfected love casts it out. It doesn't put it down. First John, the man that wrote this book, yeah. perfected love casts it out. Yes. It doesn't handle it or press it down. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. I had a man say to me not too long back, he says, that just scares me half to death. I said, well, now you've said that twice and you're still alive. <laughs> That's good, Greg. I mean, you got to quit saying that. Yes. You know, because if you say that more than once. Now, I, you know, during the week I made this comment about saying, well, uh, you know, I'll see you tomorrow if a train doesn't hit me. Ha, 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 ha. That man got hit by a train. Mm. That's the reason I brought that up. 
But there's more to it than that. He actually got hit by a train. You put certain spiritual laws in motion, right. Right. then nobody but you can turn it around. That's exactly right. And if you've done it for a long time and it's a habit and you get a lot of laughs out of it and you're in the habit of doing it, it'll take you a while to turn it around because it gets down in your spirit and then and, and it becomes a spiritual thing. Well, you start, you're lining yourself up with it. Yes, you are. Yes. You're, you're, you're changing the direction. When you said a while ago, it is done, I, I wrote this down. I remember my grandfather saying, never start a fight, but finish it. Mm -hmm. Lucifer started this fight. Yes, he did. But he's going to finish it, right? He, yeah. <laughs> he finished it right there. That's like they said, you can ship his saddle home. He's done. <laughs> it's over, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Praise yeah. God. New heaven. No, new another, another friend of mine used to yeah. say this. He'd say, you know about him? Stick a fork in him. He's done. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. I, I like, he's done. He's done. He is the spirit of fear. He's the spirit. Of, now, all of these things, he is the spirit of fear. He's the spirit of unbelieving. He is the spirit of the abominable. He is the spirit of murder. He is the spirit of whoremongering. He is the spirit of sorcery. He is the spirit of idolaters. Now, if you look that word sorcerers up, you know what the Greek word is? Pharmaka. Drugs. Dope. Idolaters. He, he is, Jesus said it. The thief comes but to steal, kill. to kill, and to destroy. Well, he's the spirit of the lie. He invented it. He's the father of all. Why? Has God said, did he really yes. say? That's what he started with. That's what it did. A little deception, a little thought, a little idea, a little suggestion. That's how he always does it. Just plants it in you. A little, little idea, a little suggestion. Then you get you start saying it and agreeing with it, pondering it, wondering about it. And, and that's when that deception begins to take over you. That's when that lie begins to take over you. Yes because you begin to yield yourself to it. Look right here. The sec 22nd chapter, the last. Yes, yes, yes. Right here it has at the bottom, the end. The end. <laughs> well, to me, that is the beginning. Right, yeah. <laughs> the end. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings and prophecy of the, this book. Look at the 16th verse. No, well, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. Now, class, it started out in the garden. The first thing any human here ever heard was be blessed, be fruitful, mm -hmm. multiply. And it ends with it. Mm -hmm. Well, verse 13, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the yes. first and the last right there. Yes. There it is. The beginning and the end. Blessed are they that do this. Now look at verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in, in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Amen. What did I tell you? What does the word Lucifer mean? The morning star, mm -hmm. the bright star. That gives me that clue. He was the most, he was an archangel and the most beautiful of all. Yes. Amen. Yes. He was the, the angel of praise and worship. All of the instruments. And Phil Driscoll pointed out to me all but one. The trumpet belongs to God. Mm. And of course, that's Phil's instrument. Right. The trumpet belongs to God. 
Hallelujah. Well, the trumpet was all through the, the temple. There's 120 trumpets on certain feasts. There was the blowing of the shofar or the trumpet. Um, on, well, on, on most of the feast. Yes. You're absolutely right. It is, then those are the Lord's feast. That does belong to him. Yes, it does. He'll determine when the trumpet's to be blown. And uh, Tim, how much time do we have, son? Oh, we're good. Let's go over here to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. God, there he is again. <laughs> this is his book. It is his book. You know what this is? I just thought of this. This is his autobiography. Mm. Mm. That's God just dropped that in my. This, this is God's autobiography. <laughs> God, who at sundry time and in different manner spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now listen to me. Now we just we just read we just read the book of Revelation, did we not? Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Here we are. Right, here. right back at it. Who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. That's the reason this universe is still out there. And he's the one that'll tear it down and build a new one. Right. And we get to be there when he does it. Yes. It's all in that last book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when it's done. It's going to burn up with fervent heat. What's he saying? Our star is going to die. It's a, it's a star of the sunshine. This, this thing that he created, who knows how many years ago. It, it, eons of time right. between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. The world had been flooded before. There was a race of people before. That's when the dinosaurs and all of that lived and they were washed out by a flood and he redid it in seven days. So anyway. Well, he tells us that all of this was created temporary yes. for seasons and times and for us to tell. And this is why he said, I will not destroy. He says it to Noah, I'll not destroy like this again. The next time I destroy it will be with fire. Yes. A new heaven and a new earth. Why do we have to have a new heaven? Because that iniquity happened there. That's where Lucifer That's was where cast down from. Yeah. Praise God. That's now, why he took his blood there. Being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, mm -hmm. for under, under the, which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, Father, and again he to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten, not the only begotten anymore, mm -hmm. the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And then you come to you're talking about angels and so forth. Unto the son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever. These are the words he used to raise him from the dead. That's right. This is it. That three days and nights was up. He said, that's enough. Get up from there. And he forced the devil to bow his knee to him right then. He took away his keys. He defeated him completely. Mm. The moment Jesus was raised from the dead, in the mind of God, now listen to me, be, be careful to hear me correctly now. In his mind, far as he was concerned, everybody's saved, everybody's healed, everybody's prosperous in his mind because the, because the author of death is defeated. The author of poverty right. is defeated. The author of sickness and disease is defeated. Now, it comes to the receiving of it. Right. And we do that with our mouth. We saw that in Romans. Yes by confessing that. You get on down here into chapter two, these things, these wonderful things we're talking about. We ought to give them more excellent, earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We ought to pay attention to what things have been deposited That's in us. That's right. 
For if the word be spoken by angels was steadfast, never transgression and disobedience received a just recompense reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first, at the first, began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed in us by them that heard it? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, there's the power. Yes, it and is. And divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. We have that power. According to his covenant. According to yes. his covenant. There it is. Are they not all ministering spirits? Now, this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. Uh huh. Jacob's ladder was over where the angels on assignment were going to and fro. They were sent forth. An innumerable number of angels came into this atmosphere with the Holy Spirit full time. All at once, man. All at once. It did not say, read it now in the book of Acts. It did not say it was a rushing mighty wind. Now that's happened from time. It had the sound of a rushing mighty wind. And I don't think it was just in Jerusalem. I think it was worldwide because it came into this planet with such force that you could hear it. I'm telling you, when you've got trillions of beings, mm -hmm. those numbers are in the Bible. Right, right. Coming back into this planet at once it disturbs this entire atmosphere. Yes. It sounded like a mighty rushing wind, and they heard it right there in yeah. Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Yes. <clears throat> I teach angels. Uh, one of the classes I get to teach part of it is angels and demons. After we've studied covenants, we talk about the difference between the First Testament angels and demons working in the, in the Second Testament, our age, or the church age, mm -hmm. the day of Pentecost. Everything changed. The, the oh. angels are here now. Yes. They were not legally here except on assignment. This is why with Daniel, I had to fight a battle to get to you. But yes. see, that's, that's different nowadays. And it took archangels. Oh, it took the big ones. The, to get stopped. Why? Because he was up against another archangel. That's exactly right. The devil. That's actually the way. He had to fight his way to get in there. Now, Jesus... They didn't have the name. No. The blood hadn't been applied. No. And now that the blood has been applied and we have been given the authority of that name, the one who took his blood to heaven, praise God, the one that defeated yeah. Lucifer, the one that hell itself shook when he said, get out of there, like you just said a second ago. Now we have... That's the power that's in us. Yes, and we are commanded to use it. To use it. In but we have a name. Done it. Largely, Brother Copeland and the church had done it, and that's what you saw with those weak and anemic. I said this yesterday, John 10, 37, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. What if that standard, I asked the Lord about this, does that standard apply to my church? Yes, it does. If I applied that standard to me as a minister, would I be believed? Because if I'm not doing the works of my Father, if you're not seeing this kind of power, oh. Come on. Come on. Well, in our, in our sacramental meeting, these signs will follow. Yes, in our sacramental meeting, Saturday morning healing school, and that young woman, yes, uh, she was, they pushed her in there in a wheelchair. Well, we didn't know the background, her background until afterwards. And so I, I, I step up there in that chair uh, for testimony. You know, I preached for nearly two hours. And, well, all morning for a healing school. And, uh, and when they put, wrote her up there, I just had an unction just go down there okay. to her. Yeah. And I walked around her there for a few moments talking about, and I told her about the first time I was in the invalid room with Oral Roberts. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't touch them till you're ready to release your faith. You're going to do the praying. Well, it frightened me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I could feel it. There's just, a, just 
color draining from my face, and he laughed. He said, don't worry about it. I'll be there with you. I'll fix it if you make a mistake. Anyway, so I said, in the name of Jesus, and that's as far as I got, and I'm telling you, the line of the tribe of Judah roared. Mm. You foul, unclean spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve, you take your hands off of God's property now. And she spit that malignant tumor out on the ground. We were in the, the invalid. She spit it up. I told her about that. And she's just still hanging here. I'm walking around there, and this just came on me and came out of me. I said, and I'll tell you something else. It's not going to be long. That chair is going to be history. She just got up and walked off. And then, and she struggled with it a little while, and a little bit, I mean, and finally she got kind of sassy about it. Come to find out, she said, I prayed for somebody to get me to Sacramento. And somebody did. And they drove there in the car put her wheelchair in the trunk of the car. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. Yeah. It's one of she those said, moments. She says, you get me there and I'll be healed. Yeah. And before it was over with, and Pastor George, he said, look at her. Her whole countenance has changed. She had a big smile on her face and she got sassy about this thing and she just going glory to God. And then Tracy Harris talked to her and he said, don't go back to that chair. Put it in the trunk of the car and don't ever sit down in it again. That's important. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. But that's now true. that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. This is the works of God. This is the work of the power. The, it's important to understand that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is always flowing and it's always on. I don't have to wait for him to turn it on. No. It's always flowing. I'm the one that has to turn on yes. or turn off. Yes, sir. It's always flowing. Yes. Prove that. I'll prove it to you. Speak in, speak in tongues. Yes. I don't have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come on me again to speak in tongues, he's always flowing. And I can turn that on right the now. The Apostle Paul that. said that. Yes. He said, I will. Yes. I will sing yes. with my understanding. Mm -hmm. I will sing with my spirit yes. by the Spirit. And he's talking about speaking in tongues. That's 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. He said, I will pray with my understanding. I will pray by the Holy Spirit or praying in the Spirit. He yeah. said, I will do it. Yes. Now, that's the way the power works. It's the way the power gifts work. A person that's the way faith works. A person walked up to Oral Roberts. I was standing there with him. Mm. And they said that to him. Do you mean to tell me that you just, and he's talking about praying in tongues and interpreting back to himself. And, 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 and now, you don't try this. You I mean, you, you pray and develop in the Spirit, and you don't have to have some kind of ecstasy or something, but you do have to have Scripture on the bottom of it. Whatever things you need, you stand on a Scripture. Yep. And that's what he did. Yep. But anyway, they said, you just turn yourself on and off anytime you want to. He said, no. No, he said, do you just turn God on and off anytime you want to? He said, no, he's always on. Mm -hmm. It's me I turn on and off. The anointing that you've received abideth in you. Yes. First John said. And it's there. It's there. It's always abiding. Uh, John Osteen said, it's a divine flow and it's based on God's love. And compassion rose up in you, yes. seeing that woman. Compassion rose up in Jesus and the power demanded of it. There was demand of the power is what happened. The compassion rose up in me when my mother's aunt they were had her there waiting on the doctor to sign the death certificate. And the, the, the compassion rose up in me and I touched her and said what God said to say. I said, ain't I to open your eyes? She snapped her eyes yeah. open. She said, Ken, what are you doing here? I said, I came to pray for you. She lived two more years. That power is in this room. That, that power, power is, is in there. your room. Right now, that power is in your room. And we're out of time on Friday. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention, right here in the beautiful city of Fort Worth in the great state of Texas. 
You tend to yourself and you show love and you show compassion and you walk strong and you walk right because power follows that. Power follows holiness. Power follows righteousness. Power follows it. The power to deliver. The power to stand healed and whole and well. The power to have plenty. The power to be supplied. The power to snatch people out of hell follows a church that is separated unto him. We are supposed to be praying and I'm not supposed to be preaching, but I cannot help myself. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention. So come get a taste of Texas and save the date for August 1st through the 6th for the Southwest Believers Convention. Register today at kcm.org slash southwest. Hallelujah. Today is offering day on the Believer's Voice of Victory. And I want to read a passage from Galatians chapter 6 to you. Beginning in verse 6, it says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. We want to give you an opportunity to sow into the word you heard this week. See, this word has such an impact on your life. And when you give, you're showing the value of that impact. And as you give, God sees it and he honors you as he's honored this ministry. Thank you, partners, for praying and sowing into this ministry. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland pray for you every day. What a blessing it is to never be without prayer a day of your life. Many of you partners pray for Kenneth and Gloria and all the KCM partners. Imagine the prayer covering going out all over the world. As you know, KCM is celebrating 55 years of ministry this year. And partners, you have been a large part of that teaching of faith to generations of families around the world. Your giving has helped send the uncompromised word of faith from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle on every available voice. That includes the TV broadcast, the magazine, website, social media, events, teaching products, Brother Copeland's partner letter, Kenneth Copeland Bible College, and more. I want to pray for your offering as you've given today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a covenant God. And Father, as they have made a covenant to give and support this ministry, Lord, you have increased their homes. You have blessed them beyond measure. And Father, we are so thankful for you and for all that you've done in Jesus' name. This is Dwayne Munoz reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. And glory to God, we started at page one <laughs> and we wound up at the end, the Alpha and the Omega, and his name is Jesus. Yes. He started it and he finished it. Glory to God. And he's coming back. That's what we just, we just read about those times. Praise God. Isn't it wonderful? I'm so glad you were with us. Be with us the next time. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland, Greg Stevens, and the entire staff reminding you that God loves you and we love you and Jesus is Lord. So give the Lord God another praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org.uk.